primary examination after a very in-depth, lengthy consultation to find out some triggers which may be connected to his uh, movement disorder that he's been experiencing for up until this point, about four and a half years. And I found in his primary degenerative tissue in his body, which turned out to be his hematopoietic cells. Hematopoietic cells in your body are the cells that actually, they produce, they give life to your red blood cells. These hematopoietic cells give life to the white blood cells and your platelets. These stem cells, also known as hematopoietic cells, are the cells that give birth to your red, white blood, red and white blood cells and your platelets. Now, side note, before I get into the findings here, when a patient, and I've met many, I've not met every seven billion, you know, of seven billion people on the planet, but in my own experience in my clinic, I've met many people who've already gone through stem cell treatments, who've already gone through treatments in different countries, as well as in the U.S., to get different stem cell treatments. And for the people who I've met, and while there may be other people who've had great results, I've met people with Parkinson's and MS and ALS and even lupus who have not had good results, who have not had any positive change from those treatments. And again, maybe I'm just meeting the select few where it hasn't worked for them, and maybe there are people out there having dramatic success with these costly stem cell procedures. I just haven't met those who have. That's all I can say about that. So I'm not knocking stem cell treatments. I'm just saying for the people I've met, they're not getting well. But let me, a logic behind this is that when the stem cells, your hematopoietic cells in your bone marrow, in your fatty tissue, in your embryo cells, when these hematopoietic or blood producing cells, also known as stem cells, when they have absorbed like a sponge throughout your life, toxins and infections, toxins like mercury from fillings in the teeth, toxins like even the white composite fillings in the teeth that have been found to cause uh, degradation of cell function and cell life. And I'll put an article up here that you can read. And when you see it on the side of me, pause the video, write down this uh, article name, and you can go and do the research on your own. The inf information is there, the World Wide Web at your fingertips. You can find it on your own, okay? So when your stem cells are loaded with streptococcal infection or even gonorrhea infection, or maybe you've had chlamydia infection that wasn't truly eradicated from the body, or maybe you have a herpes virus, or maybe you have a Lyme infection, or maybe you have tuberculosis that was maybe at very young, you had a lung infection and they just gave you antibiotics and the tuberculosis actually was driven deeper into your tissues and went down into your stem cells and started causing malfunction for many years to come, showing up at 50 or 60 or 40 years old with a movement disorder, with an inability to swing your arms or inability to walk appropriately or inability to uh, control your arm movements or your facial expressions or to speak clearly. Maybe just maybe you had infections and toxins that have bored deep into and absorbed deep into your own stem cells so this is the soil that you are looking to grow your life or your body to grow these red and white blood cells and platelets to give you a healthy bloodstream. Because what happens when the soil is loaded with fungus and mold and so on? What's going to happen to the fruit growing on that tree? Is it going to be healthy? Or is that fruit growing on that tree actually going to probably be plagued with some kind of infection? And it only makes sense that if the soil is not rich and healthy and it's infected and it's toxic, the tree itself is going to be toxic. The fruits growing off of that tree are going to be uh, not so clean. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So this gentleman's stem cells with my method of analysis, I was able to find in his stem cells, uh, let me go backwards, I'm sorry, before I tell you that, is that even if they take your own stem cells out of your body, out of your bone marrow or elsewhere, and they take those stem cells and they say they're putting it through some filtration system and they're cleaning it out, and then they re-inject those stem cells back into your body. How do you know that they're running a very complex system of analysis to find out a very wide array of which infections out of all the different bacteria that can, that can get into your body, different strep infections and staph infections and algae and fungus and mold and other bacteria and viruses and parasites and and anesthesia chemicals and antibiotic residues and, and side effects from different harmful vi vaccine chemicals. How do you know that they're really, really stripping down those stem cells to find every single infinitesimal little infection and toxin in those stem cells 
and they're gonna clean it right out and they're gonna give it back to you so that your body has a better chance with clean stem cells to clean up its own stem cells that are still in your body as well as clean up the rest of the tissue that they're supposedly targeting with these stem cells. How do you know that's being done? You can have faith in that. You can do it if you wanna do it. Again, if you've tried it or haven't tried it and you wanna do something different, this is what makes sense and this is the only thing that makes sense to me at least and many other people who I come in contact with through this information. This gentleman, in his stem cells, he had scabies infection. He had a very high level of parasitic eggs. He had streptococcal bacterial infection. He had a, uh, a fungus called mucor in his stem cells. Infection from the jawbone infection where he had a couple of missing teeth. Jawbone infection in his stem cells. He also has absorbed arsenic, heavy metal, poisonous arsenic, which can come out of the soil, in our rice, in our foods, in the chicken that you're eating. Arsenic in his stem cells. He has side effects from the tetanus shot in his stem cells. Another strep pneumonia bacteria in his stem cells. When your stem cells are loaded with infections like scabies, like parasitic eggs, like different streptococcal bacteria, like mucor, like tetanus vaccine chemicals, like arsenic. How in the world can your brain function well and your body function well when your stem cells, when the soil that makes the blood to feed your brain when it's not clean? How can you work well? And if they're even taking stem cells out of your body and putting it back into you, let's say they clean them out 100%. Does that mean that they're going to be able to clean out the rest of the soil, the other hematopoietic cells in your body? Is that what's going to really happen? And further, if they're taking stem cells from some other embryo or some other once living or alive human being, again, are you sure that they're checking and cleaning all of these stem cells to give you fresh, rich, healthy, new, wonderful, disease-fighting, as they're said, stem cells? I find it, um, I, I don't know all of these labs around the world, but I've met many people who have not had positive results. Uh, and while there may be others who have had positive results, so I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying for those who I meet with Parkinson's and lupus and ALS and MS, they are not witnessing, and stroke and pains from strokes, they're not witnessing uh, positive changes.